We will now hear a reading from the 2018 Australian Christian Book of the Year. Most evenings I went down to the riverbank to read aloud from a little handwritten bundle of war issue paper. It was 1942, and to translate Bible passages into the Arnhem Land language of Wuboy, I had sought out the best local student, Grace Yimambu, and Bidi Gain, a woman who spoke local languages but no English. We began with the Lord's Prayer, then started on Mark's Gospel. For the opening words, we chose Anna Wulu Wulu, Anna Balaman, Anna Lawu, the beginning of the good story. I would take our work in progress to the riverbank and read it to the people by the campfire. One night, the Nungubuyu leader, Madi Murugun, suddenly got up and walked away. Mahdi returned several weeks later, when he again surprised me by the fire. Glimpsing him, I held up my handwritten sheets of paper. Anambalaman, Analawu, I said. The good story. You I, Ijubulu, Mahdi replied. Yes, it is true. Sixty people emerged from the shadows to crowd around the fire. Mahdi had brought them to hear the good news of Jesus Christ in their own language. Urged on by the people, I read it over and over again, long into the night. Eventually, Mahdi came forward and asked to hold in his hands the leaves I had written on. I knew he couldn't read. Ijibulu, he said again, it is true. He used to think Jesus was only a white man's God, he said. But now he understood that Jesus was also the God of black people. I asked him what had convinced him that the life of Jesus was true. He looked down at the sheets of paper and looked up at me again. Now I know that Jesus speaks woo boy. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 Australian Christian Book of the Year is The Bible in Australia by yeah. Meredith Lake and published by New South Publishing. Meredith, would you join me on stage, please? As Meredith comes up, let me share what the judges had to say about the Bible in Australia. Meredith Lake gives an arresting and comprehensive account of how preachers, suffragists, unionists, politicians, writers, painters, musicians, immigrants, and indigenous peoples have used the Bible to shape Australian history and culture. Scripture arrived tattooed on the bodies of convicts aboard the First Fleet, and in the hands of indigenous Christians has nourished movements for justice, for land rights, and for recognition and reconciliation. Lake shows that Australia has been neither a secular society nor a Christian nation. At every level, the Bible has been held to be everything from a resented imposition to the word of God. However, even while Bible reading and biblical literacy decline, the Bible remains an indelible part of our story. This is a history of national importance and a unique insight into Australian culture. Ladies and gentlemen, the author of The Bible in Australia, the 2018 Australian Christian Book of the Year, Meredith Lake. Congratulations. I wasn't really expecting this, but thank you so much. And can I add to your acknowledgement of country this evening, uh, my respects to Indigenous people, 
uh, of Victoria, any elders who may be here today. Uh, one of the great things about writing this book uh, was the opportunity to listen over the long story of the Bible in Australia to Indigenous Christians, particularly in Victoria, and I learned a great deal from the stories of William Cooper and Simon Wonga and William Barrack and so many others, and it was a real privilege to listen through the sources to their stories of faith and their call for reconciliation. Uh, so thanks for your acknowledgement of country earlier. Uh, I'd like to obviously to thank Sparklit. Um, this, is, this is a bit of a shock. Uh, but their support for Christian writers and Christian stories, I think, is so important. We live at a time when it's difficult, I think, to speak about Christian things in a public way. Um, and the people who are putting their necks out to do that, whether they're preachers in a church or school kids in their playgrounds or writers at their computers producing books, need encouragement. We need one another. And for Sparklit to sponsor something like this and to support from teenagers through to, you know, more experienced writers is just a wonderful blessing. Uh, to, as, as an individual, I feel that. And it's a really important ministry. So... Thank you to Sparklit and to all their supporters for making this kind of thing possible and affirming uh, the exercise of gifts in these ways. Um, I'd like to thank my publisher, New South, which is, they're actually the imprint of University of New South Wales Press. They're not an uh, explicitly Christian publisher at all, they're kind of an academic publisher. Um, but they, from the outset of this project, have understood that religions, um, it's, a, it's a really vital topic. Uh, it's really important. People are curious about it, but it's hard to think and speak well about. Uh, and their support for this project, their interest in the story, um, I've only ever had full support from them, and that's been really wonderful as a writer. And I really appreciate, from their processes through to their, their continued encouragement of me, I really, I really appreciate New South. Uh, but this, this book actually, it took me about four years to write. I've got one young child up the back. There's a, a few others in the picture for me as well. Uh, and so... The support um, of uh, my husband, Joel, my older children, Jemima and Hamish, who've tolerated a lot while I've been writing this, and now Heidi has been really wonderful. Um, but in practical terms, uh, the intervention of Anglican Deaconess Ministries, which is a Christian foundation for women in Sydney, they gave me a writing fellowship in 2017, which was the critical uh, thing that enabled me to finish writing a book I'd been you know, writing in libraries for a few years before that. Uh, and their vision to see women find their voice as Christians, uh, to speak words of grace and truth to culture, even to make culture, um, that it's, it's a really exciting vision and it was terrific to be the beneficiary of that. The provision of that fellowship um, it was just one of the ways God has blessed me through his church uh, and I'm just so thankful for them and I can't wait to see where that program will go, whether some of the young writers here tonight will go on with that kind of support and become writers themselves. That would just be wonderful to see. There's a great ministry to be developed, I think. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I really hope... If I hope one thing uh, for this book, uh, it's that it will cause all of us to listen well. Uh, which is a funny thing to say about a book that's, you know, it's 100,000 words, there's a lot of, it's kind of a lot of talking, it represents a lot of talking on my part. But I think we live at a time when we have these cliches about Australia, whether we're a godless nation in which religion is kind of inauthentic or somehow illegitimate, or we're a Christian nation that's somehow declining from its Christian past. And neither of those cliches really fit the messiness of our story as a community. Um, and I think finding time to listen to um, our different stories, to listen to one another um, and to see how the Bible has actually surprised and engaged and challenged people from right across the spectrum is a really worthwhile thing. And I guess I hope that the book will encourage believers to do that, but especially the people who maybe have walked away from uh, a community of faith or have never had the opportunity to have a good think about it for themselves. So um, hopefully uh, the book will have that, that. It's up to God rather than me. Um, but I think this, this award will really help it on its way and I hope that it's a blessing to all its readers.